Now on news for today, extra security in downtown D.C., what online extremist groups have threatened to do at the Capitol and why today's date holds special significance. And a former police chief turned arson suspect. How detectives tracked down the local man accused of setting fires in counties all across the area. I decided that I did want to get a vaccination while pregnant. And a young mom trying to make the right decision for her, her family, why her COVID-19 appointment was canceled, and how News 4 helped reverse that decision. News for Today starts now. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to News for Today. I'm Un Yang. And I'm Jumi Olabanji. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday morning. It is uh, 5 o'clock just about, and there's a lot to catch you up on from overnight. First, though, a live look outside. You may need uh, that hat, maybe the gloves, coat, definitely, if you are heading out early today. Yeah, 33 degrees out there. Chilly start, but clear. In a moment, we're going to check in with Melissa Malay for a look at your first four traffic. But Chuck Bell is watching the forecast, and my goodness, I hope yesterday is a good sign of things to come, mm -hmm. Chuck. Well, it is a sign of things to come, but not over the next few days. We will be back above 60 degrees next week. Not today. Temperatures today are probably going to stay in the low 50s at most. The skies have been mainly clear. We'll get a few fair weather clouds building up during the late morning and early parts of the afternoon, but no, no need to worry about raindrops today. Not at all. A nice start this morning. We'll get plenty of sunshine. Temperatures close to average. Our average high today, 52, will be right about average this afternoon. But the chilly breeze from the northwest arrives this afternoon. It will be with us for this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, and the weekend. Right now it's 32, so it's cold in College Park, but it's 41 in Arlington, 43 in Upper Marlboro this morning, but 28 in Bristow, 38 degrees in Montgomery Village. So as you're planning out your day, a big of temperatures this morning, things will level out this afternoon. Most of us will get high temperatures in the low 50s, but again, it will turn a little breezy and blustery by later on in the afternoon. So probably gonna need that insulated windbreaker for activities after five or six o'clock. Let's go to Melissa Blake, see how the traffic's coming along. All right, good morning, good morning. So we're gonna take a look at the roads here in one second. My uh, computer decided to kick me out of what we were doing. So let's see if we can get it back real quickly. Uh, inner loop, outer loop of the Beltway, overall looking good. You should be able to see it now, guys. So Fredericksburg northbound Route 1 there. After Centerport Park, we have the right lane blocked by a work zone. Sounds like they're going to do some traffic shifting here Friday evening. 66, 95, we don't have any issues again. Beltway is looking quite good through Prince George's County. We have no problems into town or out of town to 70, 95 in Maryland, BW Parkway. Everything there rolling along just fine. Back to you. Okay, thanks, Melissa. Right now, on alert, Capitol Police and National Guard troops in downtown D.C. are watching for any trouble tied to a conspiracy theory surrounding today's date, March 4th. Yeah, law enforcement uh, taking this intelligence very seriously, determined not to have a repeat of the mistakes of January 6th. Capitol Police say uh, they received information about a, quote, possible pl plot to breach the Capitol today. So far, there's no evidence of a plan coming together. But the warning was enough to prompt the House to move up scheduled votes. They wrapped up their work late last night, so members would not have to be on the Hill today. The Senate will still be in session today, though, and several Hill staffers tell News 4 they were ordered to work from home. That is what is going on inside the Capitol today. News 4's Justin Finch joins us live to show us what's happening outside. Justin, good morning. On Jumi, good morning. Today, certainly enhanced security is the focus here on Capitol Hill. And looking live here at the U.S. Capitol, you can see that security in full effect. That high fencing still very much in place with that razor wire on top. And if you look just behind that fencing, you can see those National Guard's troops, and they are armed as well. There is layer upon layer of security now inside and around the Capitol complex. As Capitol Police say, they have intelligence showing an identified militia group with plans to take control of the U.S. Capitol once again. Now, conspiracy group QAnon claiming former President Trump will regain power on March 4th today. They're calling today the true inauguration day, and that's because March 4th was the original presidential inauguration day until 1933 when it was moved to January 20th. And today's heightened security is coming almost two months after 
after that violent mob of insurrection that stormed the U.S. Capitol building, attempting to stop Congress from certifying Joe Biden's presidential victory. The difference, though, today, this time, Capitol Police say they are prepared for any potential threats towards members of Congress or the Capitol itself. We have an outer perimeter as well as an inner perimeter. We have CDU units on uh, standby, and we work with the National Guard. We heard from the congressional community that this is the people's house. We are showing you a live picture of those National Guard's troops who are armed behind that fence there. There are thousands of troops spread about the Capitol complex and around the district today, as they have been now for months, and that will continue into the weekend, this heightened security response, as they prepare for anything, they say, that might come over the next few days. We're live on Capitol Hill. I'm Justin Finch, News 4. All right, Justin, thank you. As the Capitol is locked down once again, congressional lawmakers are still trying to figure out what went wrong on January 6th. During yesterday's hearing, the commander of the D.C. National Guard told senators it took three hours and 19 minutes for the green light to send his forces to protect the Capitol. For some of that time, they were sitting and waiting on a bus. At that point, seconds mattered, minutes mattered. And I needed to be ready to get them there as quick as possible. So I already had District of Columbia National Guard military police vehicle in front of the bus to help uh, get through any traffic uh, lights. Mm -hmm. So we were there in 18 minutes. An 18-minute trip was delayed more than three hours after a frantic phone call from the Capitol Police Chief. We still don't know why Defense Department approval to deploy the National Guard was delayed. But our coverage of today's precautions and the insurrection investigation, that continues online on our website. Right now, you'll find a story there about an FBI raid on a home of a possible Proud Boys member. Find that story at NBCWashington.com. It's now 5.05. We're following a disturbing story. Former Laurel Police Chief David Crawford is suspected in a series of arsons involving some of his neighbors. The fires happened in Howard, Charles, Montgomery, Prince George's, and Frederick Counties, Maryland. Investigators say revenge was the motive. News Force Juliana Lencia is live with details. Juliana, good morning. Good morning, Anya. David Crawford, he's accused of targeting relatives, neighbors, former bosses, and even two of his doctors. And some of these arsons have been caught on home security cameras. The fire started back in 2011 and most recently happened last year. Crawford is suspected in about a dozen fires in Maryland. And Maryland's fire marshal says revenge appears to be the motive behind these fires. People who are, you know, angry, do they do... They do bad things, and uh, clearly um, our suspect you know, thought he was wronged in a lot of different cases and wronged by a lot of different people, and these are all, you know, spite revenge fires. You know, this is shocking because the 69-year-old man, he has a long career in law enforcement. He served as police chief in Laurel, as chief in District Heights, and held the rank of major in Prince George's County. And this investigation extends beyond Maryland to other states where he has relatives. And some of the charges he's facing include attempted murder. Back to you. Um, yeah, just a disturbing story for sure. Juliana Valencia live for us. Thank you, Juliana. Today marks one year since the first reported coronavirus infection in Maryland in a twilight ceremony will be held tonight at the State House. The building will be lit in amber along with several other government buildings to honor the victims of COVID-19. And also in Maryland, a new mass vaccination site will open in Charles County today. Crews were busy yesterday setting up at the Blue Crab Stadium in Waldorf. Today's opening is one week ahead of schedule. Maryland is expected to open several new mass vaccination sites over the next few weeks. Big changes are happening today and tomorrow to D.C.'s COVID-19 online registration portal. After it crashed last week, the city says eligibility is being paused for certain groups to give priority to seniors 65 years and older and residents age 18 to 64 with qualifying medical conditions. All D.C. residents and essential workers will be able to pre-register next week. News 4's Juliana Valencia will have details in the next half hour. Northern Virginia's first mass vaccination site is now open. It's at the old Gander Mountain store in Woodbridge. The site is not open to the public. Virginia's health department is only scheduling people who already registered. 
Inside that store, Walmart is operating a clinic that can administer about 600 shots a day. Well, fewer Americans will receive those $1,400 stimulus checks that are included in the House-passed COVID relief bill. Yeah, now people making more than $80,000 and couples making more than $160,000 will not get a penny. President Biden signed off on major changes, hoping this move will secure more votes in the Senate. Also, yesterday, the president took shots at Texas and Mississippi for easing COVID restrictions on businesses and lifting mask mandates. The last thing, the last thing we need is the Neanderthal thinking that in the meantime, everything's fine. Take off your mask. Forget it. It still matters. Texas Governor Greg Abbott argues the goal all along has not been to eliminate COVID-19, but to reduce the risk. He says Texas has done that. The state's mask mandate expires next Wednesday. Now to a look at the number of COVID cases in our region. Maryland added 786 new infections and 26 more deaths. In the district, there were 51 new infections and four more deaths. And Virginia added nearly 900 new cases. There were more than 300 deaths reported as part of an ongoing backlog. It's 5.09. Later today, several local jurisdictions will update us on their efforts to fight coronavirus. Prince George's County and D.C. will hold morning briefings. This afternoon, Maryland will provide a status update. We'll have the very latest developments this afternoon, starting at News 4 at 4. Well, now to a story making waves on social media. An apparently successful test uh, was a test flight for SpaceX. It turned out to be a failure. Yeah, a Starship rocket launched six miles into the air above Texas yesterday. Then it flipped upright and came back down to stick the landing. Yeah, minutes after, though, declaring all of this a success, check out what happened next. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Oh, oh, my God. There you go. Mm, well, you can uh, see the Starship exploded minutes after that landing. SpaceX has not commented about what went wrong. Yikes, these early prototypes of Starship are what Elon Musk hopes will eventually send people to the moon and Mars one day, but not yet. Uh, they, uh, they have uh, some issues to work out, apparently. Yeah. Uh, and I hope, mm. that, you know, it's very cool to see. Yes. At first, it did look like sticking the landing. Oh, Pretty yeah, incredible. And then, yeah. Well, hopefully they get all that yeah. fixed before <laughs> anybody heads up in one of those. Oh, yeah. It's now 5:11. Next on News for today, a mom to be focused on protecting her family is stunned when her COVID-19 appointment is canceled. To get all the way to the pharmacy, like you know, feels like to the finish line, and then to be turned away. That seemed to me um, just to be disappointing. What changed after News for? first told her story. Plus, pom-poms are about to be a thing of the past. The new sideline entertainment for the Washington football team and its fans. And Chuck has the forecast. Yes, indeed. Wake up weather on your Thursday morning. It's not too terribly breezy outside now. It will be an increasing northwest wind later today. Temperatures generally, for the most part, in the 30s this morning will rise into the mid-40s before lunchtime today. And temperatures this afternoon hovering near 50 degrees. Colder days are coming, though. 10-day forecast coming up.